Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, September 16th. Your show hosts today are Peggy George. I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks, to Tammy, for doing closed captioning for us. Our topic today is a guide to writing a Donors Choose project and getting it funded with Francie Kugelman. And I'm not sure who's going to introduce Francie. And that would Peggy be me. Will. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, this is Peggy. Peggy George. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We know that many of you are just getting started with your new school year. And you're starting to realize that there are some things you really want or need for your classrooms to help all of your students achieve success. So we decided this would be a perfect time to revisit Donors Choose to see if we can help you find a way to get some of those fantastic resources. Well, we are really excited to have Francie Kugelman with us today as our special guest presenter to share information and her very best tips about writing successful Donors Choose projects. Francie did a presentation a couple of years ago with Laura Candler about Donors Choose, and we all learned so many valuable things. And you'll actually find the link to that recording in our live binder today if you'd like to go back and watch that. Francie's a third grade teacher in Los Angeles. She has taught sixth, fifth, and third grade for 16 years. Francie first began using DonorsChoose.org in 2006, and now, this is so impressive, has funded over 215 projects for her classroom and her school's organic garden. Francie's a co-administrator of the Caring Classrooms Giving page with Laura Candler. And we are so thrilled to have Laura joining us in the chat today. We might even entice her to get on the microphone at some point. For the past four years, the Caring Classrooms Giving page has helped teachers get over 3,680 projects funded and has raised more than $353,000 in donations for Donors Choose projects. Francie loves to help teachers get their projects funded, and she shares ideas all the time and new opportunities on the Caring Classrooms Facebook page, which is also in our live binder. She helps DonorsChoose.org by screening projects that are field trips, professional development, and visitor projects. So I'm going to ask Francie to answer our newbie question, and then she'll take over with her presentation. So thank you so much, Francie, for sharing with us today. And if any of you have questions for either Francie or Laura during the webinar, be sure to type them in the chat, and Francie will answer them during the Q&A. So here is our newbie question, Francie. Why is grant writing and knowledge of classroom funding resources important for teachers? That's a great question, Peggy. Thank, and thank you so much for letting me share today. I'm very excited and so glad this is being recorded so many people can learn on their own time. Every year, there are new cool things that teachers hear about. For example, this year, everyone wants flexible seating. And another thing is ed, um, breakout. EDU. And so when you hear about these new things, how are you going to pay for them? Because you want them for your classroom. And so knowing about grants and knowing about how to get new resources for your classroom without spending all of your own money is important. There's books that are published every year. Everybody wants those new books. So there's so many things we need and want. And um, Donors Choose or other grants will help us get what we need. So by knowing about what's going on, you'll be successful and you'll keep your class happy and you'll keep yourself happy because it's wonderful for us as teachers to add to our arsenal of resources.
Great. Well, here we go. This is my presentation on how to get your projects funded. And um, Donors Choose really cares about us. They're a nonprofit organization, and they care about um, making sure that students and teachers ha have the resources they need. This is Charles Best, and he is, was a high school teacher, and he needed some resources, and he created this organization, Donors Choose. And of course, it, grew, it has grown and grown, and it's now 17 years old. Does it work? Of course it does. Look how many projects have been funded since 2000, 975,000. And what's amazing is, there's so many unique donors. That means different donors have donated through the years, 2.8 million, and they've raised over $575 million for classroom projects. It's a huge organization. I was looking at Adopt a Classroom, and they've raised like $30 million. So the numbers are astounding for Donors Choose. Well, it's not just teachers who could submit a Donors Choose project. Librarians, guidance counselors, nurses, and if you are a classroom teacher plus a coach, coaches can uh, submit. The only thing is, and I know it's going to break a lot of people's hearts, is it's just for public school teachers in the United States. Right now, private schools and parochial schools are not included. Although donors choose may, in the future, change that. But for now, they're focusing on making sure every school in America has at least tried donors choose. And if you're a public charter school, you also are eligible to have a project. What I like about donors choose is I don't have to go get the principal to sign anything as a requirement to submit my projects. Because I know whenever I do other types of grants, this principal gets involved. There's not a lot of work for you to do once you set up your account. It's just a small essay, like three paragraphs, and you can have many proposals and projects up waiting to be funded waiting for the resources to come in, and waiting for thank you letters. When you're a pro like me, you can have eight uh, circling around at the same time. So that's pretty exciting. It's not difficult at all to use Donors Choose. And of course, I included my lovely lady shopping because I love to shop online. And so you just have to write a short essay, go shopping, and then uh, include six photographs. And this is my current class. These are very recent photos. The large one on the right is uh, Ozobot Bits. It's a new type of little robot that follows colors, and you can program them at the same time. And of course, uh, this young lady was having her Ozobot travel around the United States. The middle one is for. Uh, Rube Goldberg projects when people want to have a chain reaction kit. So now I have four of those. And then this young little man here, he is so proud of uh, his quote of the week that he wrote. And he printed it on my laser printer at school. And so he's showing, thank you, donor, for giving us toner so we can have laser prints of anything we want. And now I've trained my third graders to type at home email it to our classroom Gmail account, and then they come in, Mrs. K, I need to print out my essay, and uh, which, which is wonderful because all of us teachers know that in the spring they'll be typing for state testing. So we, we always request toner. My school does not provide any toner. These are some things I've gotten in the past, a subscription to Brain Pop, Owl Pellets, Every Halloween morning, my students always, as a tradition, dissect owl pellets in classroom sets of books. I love classroom sets of books. So if you um, had any damage with the hurricanes, um, I want you to know that there are funds available to help you get your projects 
uh, funded, whether it's classroom resources that got damaged or if you need to help your students with clothing. So uh, if you notice, $840,000 has been raised so far and not much of it has been spent. And just recently, um, Dick Sporting Goods has pledged $1 million to help team sports get the uh, things that were damaged for their I have a list here of some ideas of what you might want to ask for. And I have a little hokey stool if you've been wondering what that is. It's this cute little thing that rocks. And um, iPads, Chromebooks, paper, pens, a new projector, uh, Scholastic News, all of these are resources that you can request through Donors Choose because they're for your students. And once you have a uh, one or two projects fully funded and you've sent in the photographs, you can then write a different kind of project, which is a field trip project. You can get the bus transportation costs paid, the admission to a museum paid, and now what's remarkable is you can get funding for a professional development conference for yourself. That means if you want to go join me at ITSD in Chicago in 2018, the membership is paid, the registration is paid, lodging $100 a day is paid, transportation costs $150 maximum, and $30 a day food is covered. But you can't write that right away. We want you to write a small project or two so you get your points and then you can do this. And look at this. You can have people come to your school. My friend, she has a mural artist come and they paint beautiful murals at her school working with the kids. A scientist come for a planetary show or your favorite author visit. All of these can be donors choose projects. So start thinking out of the box. What could I do that will make my kids have a memorable year? So now I'm just going to throw some things out for you. If you're a kindergarten teacher or if you know a kindergarten teacher that hasn't tried Donors Choose yet, these are some things they might want to ask for. Moving on, primary grade, you can get your chicken inc incubator that you've always wanted and uh, art supplies, a classroom rug. Those are so expensive and such a wonder to have them paid with a Donors Choose project. Upper grades, we've got my students here playing chess and field trip projects, robotics. There's a match right now on robotics and uh, class sets of books or you know six books at a time, lit literature circles. For my uh, high school teachers, instruments and microphones, green screens, uh, calculators. I've seen people ask for those very, very high-tech calculators for their class. Clickers people ask for. And of course, any type of toner. So right now, we're going to have our first poll. And we want to know if your school is situated in an area where over 50% of the kids qualify for free or reduced price lunch. So you would click yes if that's the case and no if it's 50% uh, or less. So that helps us know because some of the Donors Choose sponsorship grants are tailored to uh, high poverty schools. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of yeses, which is great, because that means you get even more access to grants than I do, because we are right on the border of 50%. Okay, so we can publish that poll and see what um, we have. So there we go. So um, only 18% of us work at schools that don't qualify for the um, Title I money or over 50%. Thank you so much for taking our poll. So this is an overview of what I've done since 2006 when Donors Choose opened themselves up to all of the United States. It started with just helping New York teachers. 
and 128,000 in resources. It's quite remarkable. So now I just helped the coach. You know, Dix had a grant, and they said, we'll give you an extra 200 if you help the coach with team projects. So now they have brand new flag football. Uh, resources and of course our my school garden is 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 dear to my heart so it's full of wonderful things we have a sink an outdoor sink where they wash all, wash all the vegetables and um, you can even order wood from Home Depot and that's called a special project so there's so many things you can do so that's not just for me but yes my classroom does have resources and every year I don't know why I keep thinking of more things that would be wonderful and of course I share it with my third grade partner teacher. So you're saying, Francie, what's going on? Why so many projects? And the reason is, is that 99% of my projects are very small because I have realized that small projects get funded, especially a small project where a donation is doubled because it has a 50% match. And my goal today is to teach you how to be like me and try my strategy because Donors Choose has realized that if you keep your project costs at 400 or less, 70% of those projects will get funded. But I think that percent would be much higher if all of those people also had a 50% match because that's what happens to me. I have a $200 project. With a match, someone only has to donate 100. So I can get 20, 20, 20. And within a short amount of time, my projects are funded. So I want you to put on your thinking cap and pretend you're a donor. You're just saying, you know, I feel like donating to a project where a teacher wants musical instruments. So the donor goes and looks through the search engine, types in music, has two, 20 bucks to spend. Do you think a donor would prefer donating to a project that has $790 remaining or $100 remaining? I ask this because donors want to make an impact. And if you give $20 to a $790 project, what impact is that? It dropped to $770. But if you donate to a project that only has $100 remaining, you are making an impact. It only needs 80. So that's why smaller projects attract donors. They can make an impact and feel really good for their donation. Let's take it further. A donor has 20 bucks to spend, and there's 100 remaining on two projects. As a donor, would you rather donate to a project that has a 50% match where your $20 donation will become 40 or to the other project that doesn't have a match? Well, of course, 40 bucks on 100, you're down to 60, which is really just 30 remaining because of the match. The timing of my webinar is amazing because Donors Choose has just announced that Welcome Week, a brand new thing they've never done before, will occur starting September 25th. And what that means is if you have never written a Donors Choose project before, Donors Choose will be donating $50 to your project towards the end of the week. Isn't that amazing? What a gift. Why are they doing this? Because they want to spread the amount of teachers that are try donors choose. And you have to make sure your project cost is under 500. That doesn't mean you get $500 of resources because your project cost would be in the 600s. You have to stop at about 350 or 400 and make sure your total project cost is under 500. Also, you cannot submit the project now. I know you'll be inspired listening to me, but no, you have to wait and submit it. Hit the submit button on September 25th. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to uh, write it now. You can write it, have it all ready to go, and then mon that Monday morning, you're going to hit submit on September 25th to qualify for this amazing thing. Now, I've been in negotiations with Donors Choose all week long because a lot of teachers 
wrote a project, but it didn't fund. And I feel sorry for those people. And we call those people never been funded teachers. And I have received the OK to announce, drumroll please, that if you wrote a project and it's never been funded, you too will qualify for, a, for the $50 donation. And I want you, because you're going to become an expert on getting matches, to get a project with a match. So any people, new teachers or never been funded teachers, will get a $50 donation, which will be matched. So it'll be worth $100. Isn't that amazing? $100 given by donors choose. It's just so exciting. So let's talk about what this 50% match is that I'm talking about. Well, your project is 300 with a match. You only need donations that are $150. It's as simple as that. So of course, I want you to think about keeping your project cost at about 200 for the special Welcome Week project. You'll get the $50 towards the end of the week. And if you're clever enough to write a project with a match, that 50 will become 100. So your project went from 200 remaining to 100 remaining. Then all you need is another $50 donated, because that will also be matched and your project will fund. Now, I think we can find five people that will donate. No, I don't even need five people. It's just 50 bucks. Two people that will donate 25 bucks to get your $200 project funded. So please, I want all of you to try this and not go crazy and go to the 500. It's so much fun to get a project funded. So don't tempt fate and write a project that is too expensive. So. Let's talk about what's available right now. Quill has just announced in the past few days that they will match uh, donations. And Quill is a store that sells things you'd find at Office Depot or Staples. And you see that little uh, star at the right-hand side? That is a national offer. So it's not just for me in California. Everybody could write a Quill project. But this is only for the teachers where, see where my arrow is? More than half of your students are from low-income households. So uh, people like me, I, I'm, I'm under that, that, that level now because um, our population has changed in the city I teach in. And so I can't do that. Notice there's a project limit. You cannot make your total cost over 425. And I've included this cute little cart because it turns out that Quill is not just for paper goods, but they have this great honey can do cart. And I have one in my classroom. This is what Quill looks like. You can get anything you want. I personally always get toner. I love toner. But you can get posted easel pads. Everyone loves those. Dry erase markers, whatever you want. But you only can shop at Quill to get the Quill match. This is what it looks like when you go to Donors Choose to um, get the directions of the match. And I want you to click on see more details to learn more about whatever the rules are. Here's our next match, again, for high poverty schools only. And <clears throat> this time, you'll write a project for a mixture of some kind of science resources that you want. And you're going to tie it into art. It says, keep your project goal under a thousand, but you know me, I am not going to do a thousand. I want you to have success within a week or two. Make it a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars maximum, and uh, you will qualify for this match. And the most important thing is make sure that you follow the directions. The Donors Choose has made it so easy. They say, click, start a project, and they give you helpful hints. Now, the tolerance match is amazing. It's been here since May. And we don't know when it's going to end, but Donors Choose recently said there's still money for this match. So this one, you have to actually type in the word tolerance when you first write your project. And I'm showing you. It's hard to see it. You might miss it when you're writing your project. But see where it says, got a campaign code? You would type in the word tolerance. And this, this is to help. You get resources so your students are um, getting new books that 
represent your diverse class. Or I bought a great class set through the tolerance match of a book called Whitewater, which taught my students about the Jim Crow laws and how horrible that era was. It's a read aloud book I recommend. And this person here that we're looking at, they received the tolerance match. This is what it looks like when you have a match. Now, this person got hokey stools using the tolerance match. And it's stretching it, but it does work. So what you would say is, my students need to learn to get along with each other. They're going to have flexible seating. They'll be sitting with different people. They have to have respect for others. And you type in the word tolerance in the campaign code, and you'll get the match. So. Although this person has $450 remaining to be funded, if you look where my arrow is, the project really only needs 225 So uh, the tolerance match is a wonderful. There's also a robotics match. And by the way, the tolerance match has nothing to do with your school's income. So this is for anybody. Same with the robotics match. 3M is has a special campaign code. You still ha you have to write it in, just like you had to do with the tolerance match. And this campaign code is 3M Robotics, and they will give you ro robots that. Uh, let's see what this says. Create a project that innovates solutions using robotics. Oh. Don't worry about that second line. They're having a contest. And so the contest ends uh, yesterday on September 15th. But you can still request robotics. The contest was the person who had the best project will win lots of donors choose gift card money. So I did this match many times. And now I have nine sets of the Lego We Do robots. This is a fantastic thing. But again, I am not going to write a project uh, for 1200 I would rather write small projects and get them all funded. This is what the match looks like. And Donors Choose has really uh, fixed how you uh, work when you write a project. And if you click on Start Here Now, see where it says Create Your Project, they will tell you, did you put in your campaign code? Did you check technology? You know, So it's pretty hard to mess up. They will guide you step by step if you want the robotics project. Not all projects they do that on, but uh, they have done that on this one. So. Another thing that Donors Choose wants to remind you that if you are a never um, a teacher that has never written a Donors Choose project and you don't have a match, then you tell all your friends and family and your uh, parents if they are able to donate to type in the word lift off in the redemption box, and then a donation will be doubled. So that's just another idea for people who write projects without a match. This is another offer by Donors Choose. There's a donor who only wants to donate to specific schools in 13 states. And so uh, Peggy will provide you with the link so you can see if your friends have um, their school listed. And these are schools that have never tried Donors Choose. Not one teacher has tried it. So guess what? $500 will be donated to a project that you write. OK, so it's very specific. It's pretty amazing. And they're actually just fine tuning it to certain schools. That's how much Donors Choose wants to increase their reach in America. So shall we write a project? Let's try it. So to begin, you're going to click go to DonorsChoose.org. Click on Start Your First Project. You're going to see this uh, Get Started button. As you notice, so far so good. Not very hard. You've got to answer some questions. Tell them about your school. And for contact information, I strongly recommend you don't use your school email, because sometimes uh, donors choose emails to you end up in spam. So just use your Gmail account or whatever you use. You need to include a photo. And so if you don't have permission slips from Donors Choose that allow you to include your students in it, you can include student art. In the old days, Donors Choose accepted your bulletin board. That's not going to work anymore. And your empty classroom, that's not going to work. And a picture of you is not going to work. So they really want student art or 
much better. These are my kids from last year. A picture of your kids. So this lovely green circle helps you realize that don't have a huge picture of your kids because for safety reasons that's not good. But definitely have pictures of your kids happy. And these are my kids who just got a new set of PE equipment last year. This is what your picture looks like when it's posted. And I have this as an example of what not to do. I think it's too busy. And instead, I would just have this girl. She looks fantastic. I would donate to a project if she was on it. And so, you know, be careful for your design because your goal is to attract donors. Also, see that cute picture of Mr. Case? We want you to upload a picture of yourself. We want donors to see what you look like. And then it, there's that wonderful cue that a donor sees, oh, you, you're a never before funded teacher. I'm going to donate to you and help you out. This is what my picture looks like when I had some projects listed. And uh, so that picture that you use is everywhere whenever people look at projects. Here's something from Donors Choose. They have safe photos and which show just cute little pictures of kids but not huge. If you're going to do a close up, you can have your the student sideways, artwork, and if you're going to include yourself, why don't you include some kids in it too. These are not to be used. Too large, empty classroom, clip art, and that glamour shot of you is not going to work. So when you're writing a project, I don't want you to check professional development because that's going to be when you want to go to ITSTE and get your uh, conference paid, but you're just going to click on standard project. Wait a minute. I don't want you to write your project yet because instead I want you to look at the match offers. We've all heard of backwards planning. That's what I want you to do. Go look at the list of offers that are currently available. They don't last forever. Check your state. If you look here, see those stars? Those are all national offers. Pick the offer first and write your project to match the offer. It's doable. I taught you how you could do a hokey stool and use the, cha the challenge grant for tolerance. So it's very possible to tailor your project to the grant or get inspired to write your project based on the grant. Don't overdo it on the shopping. Please try to keep it under 400. And what I'm saying is 200. All this talk about shopping has inspired me to have a giveaway. Donors Choose has given me gift cards to donate to you. And so I have a $25 gift card here. And Peggy, I want you to take over and handle the gift card giveaway. OK. If you are eligible for Donors Choose, that means if you're in a public school in the United States, Raise your hand, and the way you raise your hand is to click on that third icon that looks like a little hand, and you'll see a little number popping up right by your name. And I'm going to give you a minute to everyone that wants to be eligible for this. This is so exciting. Get your hand up, and then I'm going to say stop. And when I say stop, don't change anything. Don't remove your name, because that changes everybody's number. So when I say stop, keep your hands off your mouse. And I'm going to go to the random drawing tool that I have and enter the numbers. So right now, we have 19 hands raised and 20. OK, 20. One, twenty-two. OK. And stop. So we're going with 22. And just one moment. And the result is number Eight is the winner. So congratulations, Alexandra. You are the winner for this drawing. But there are some other opportunities coming up. Stay tuned.
Thank you, Peggy. That was really fun. Love giving away things. I think that's why Laura and I do uh, Caring Classrooms Facebook page. We just love being generous to teachers. So let's see what we've got here. So we've been talking about hokey stools. Here's a little example of a hundred dollar seven hokey stool, and the total project cost is not a hundred and seven. It's a hundred and seventy four dollars. So be aware there are fees and shipping and tax. All these things add up. So when you're dreaming of your dream project, keep checking what the total cost is because that's what's important. But I don't want one hokey stool. I want two. So let's see what happens when I have two. The total cost has jumped to $314. But if you have the Welcome Week $100 donation because you did a, a, a match, you really only need another $107 left to fully fund it. And this is what it looks like when a project has a match. This person started with a $252 project, good low cost, 182 is left. And if you look on the right-hand side where you see two times, it only really needs $91. So um, that shows you the power of a match. So this is what it's like to go shopping now on the Donors Choose website. These are all the vendors alphabetically listed for your convenience. Of course, a lot of us are, are uh, eager to use Amazon. AKJ is another alternative for books, and Blick is great for art supplies. Best Buy, you can get your uh, technology or compare the cost between Best Buy and Amazon. Uh, here's Dick's Sporting Goods, but remember, the matches for Dick's is always only for team sports. So if you're a coach, this is perfect for you. This is where you can get your uh, barn owl pellets from Fry Scientific. Kaplan Early Learning is where you'll get your hokey stools. And of course, Lakeshore, they just finished their 50% match. So now that you know about it, uh, you'll be listening to me every year and uh, be ready to ask for Lakeshore projects. But if you like to shop at Lakeshore, be sure to get your magnetic timer. It's a big thrill for my students. Scholastic News subscription, wouldn't that be nice to have a class subscription to Scholastic News? You can also get a subscription for Time for Kids, and there's currently a match for that. You could get a classroom rug at School Specialty, and musical instruments at Woodwind and Brasswind. And here are last year's kids, and they're with our wonderful handbells, and so we always use them for the holiday show. This is uh, an example of shopping at Amazon. If you click right there where it says Amazon Prime, your search engine will only list Prime products because Donors Choose has a rule that you can only request items from Amazon that have the Prime logo on it. This is just what Hokey Stools look like. And uh, the only vendor that I know of is Kaplan Early Learning. You want to make sure your title is amazing. So I thought of this one, third grade wants to rock and roll with hokey stools, kind of cute. Here are some other titles I've used in the past. Notice my titles always tend to tell the donor what I'm asking, but yet in a, wonder, in a wonderful way. I was looking at that word because the book Wonder is wonderful. And you know what you can do once you write that first project? You can have a field trip to take your kids to see the movie Wonder. You get a price quote from the theater, find out what it costs, throw in some you know, snacks for the kids, get bus transportation, and by November when the film comes out, you will have a fully funded project to go see Wonder. And you will use the tolerance match because Wonder is all about teaching your kids about being kind to others that are a little different. So after you pick your resources, you describe them. Make sure you describe them in a great way because that description will be featured on your project. You want to make sure your essay is heartfelt. You describe your students. And you say, you know, please donate to this project. Try to inspire with some persuasive writing. Uh, this is a way to get your donor's attention. You might want to have a, an, an opening 
this is another one I did in the past. I, notice I've highlighted what is important to donors. My kids uh, are have a, um, a low socioeconomic level. I teach many kids. I have English language learners. Okay, these are some of the words to use. But you know, don't say I have ELLs. The donor's not going to know what you talk about. And this is my latest one where I teach 25 happy and excited to learn third graders. And then see this arrow. This is where I'm featuring that, um, that our a school population has kids that qualify for free or reduced price lunch. The second um, paragraph is emphasize. And you'll see when you're writing the project, it'll be highlighted in green. So make sure whatever you want to emphasize looks good, because this is how Donors Choose now uh, tailors it. See how this green thing becomes what becomes the emphasis. So watch what it is and hit your return so you have the perfect one sentence that you want emphasized. This is what the emphasis looks like. So uh, the, you know, if the donor doesn't want to read everything, they just read this section. So you want this to be really good. The donor's choose is really helpful. They'll say, hey, do you want to edit your title? Do you want to edit your resource card? Whatever you want, either you can have a second chance to edit it before you hit submit. We just want to remind you, Donors Choose is not for fundraisers. It is not to give you a laptop. It's for students. So if you, if you say, I want a laptop, your project will never post. There are screeners that will stop it. If you say, I want a laptop for my kids, that's different. But if I want a laptop so I can grade papers, no, you won't get it. And you, you can't give um, your resources to another to school. It's for your classroom. And in order to uh, spread the net of donors, pick two different subject areas. Because maybe a donor is going to look up musical instruments, and another one is going to look up history projects. So if your project can, can, click, uh, can relate to two different areas, check them. You, they, the donor might find your project. So this is what I was saying. When you first start off, it, a project costs a point if it's a certain amount of money. But if you notice, field trip projects cost three points. So uh, I would like you to write a small project, gain some points. And this is how you gain them. You confirm, yes, I want this project. You upload six pictures of your happy kids using them. And you write two paragraphs saying how wonderful your project is. You get points every time you do those things. Donors Choose takes care of everything. They mail your project to you, and um, it, they really have, uh, you get it within weeks. So total strangers could fund your project. Your parents could help fund your project. The PTA can fund your project. And uh, Laura Candler has a, a sample letter that you can use if you want to write your parents. And I just, um, I, I now am an email queen, so I write my parents and tell them about the match and how exciting it'd be if we have this. And they get pretty, pretty exciting. So remember, $200 project costs for Team Francie teachers, because you're going to get that special $100 match, and you only have to come up with $50 to get your project funded if you have uh, a match. So if you wanted to go on a field trip later on, you um, you can write a request, and you just have to get a price code from the bus transportation vendor, from the uh, wherever you want to go, the aquarium, and then you submit that price quote. And we like you to separate the uh, price quote. So you have one line item just for the bus and another line item for where you're going. So you can post on Facebook. It's OK. You can say, hey, I've got this great project. It only needs 20 more dollars. Could you help? And guess what? Uh, 20 of your friends will donate a dollar, and you're done. So it's OK to ask, especially if you don't have a huge project. People want to help you. This is the best news. You get an email that looks like this. Your project is funded. 
And so you have to respond within six days, and you get points if you respond on time. So of course, I respond within hours of receiving this notice. Then um, your principal is notified, and other teachers that have used Donors Choose at your school are notified because they want to make sure you're still at that school. And then uh, you wait for your resources to get there. And um, rarely do you have to write a thank you note. So don't worry about that. It's like 5% of the time you have to write a thank you note. But you do have to upload photos. So uh, Peggy's going to provide a link where you can download a PDF file in uh, different languages for uh, getting the parents to approve pictures. And here's my girl from last year. She uh, created a store with the markers. And so we had got gotten a class set of, the, of wonderful markers from Blick, and so, so I uploaded that photo of her using the markers. This is what it looks like when you upload your photos. You just, uh, you can upload them all at once, which is, a, you know, highlight six photos and boom, upload them all at once. And just make sure there's happy kids using the product. I don't think a picture of your kid holding the box is great. But I mean, open the darn box and just use it. And then that's much better. That's what donors want to see. Here is my my students. Just uh, last week, they they were uh, using our iPad to build their Lego We Do robot, and then um, after that, they they were doing doing block programming to make the We Do move. And not once did they ask me questions. Isn't that amazing? Third graders, don't, they don't need me. This is another girl in our class. We have this cute book. It's called Dog Coo. And uh, I use the tolerance match to teach my kids uh, about poetry and compassion for others. And so this is about a dog. And it's all written in haiku. And after that, my kids wrote haiku about Hurricane Harvey. So this is what Donors Choose has you do. You upload your photos. You describe the impact and of how, much, how wonderful it was to have these resources. And it's just another way of doing a thank you note. It's all online. And then I get this all the time. In this rare case, you do not have to send thank yous. But if you have to send a thank you, it's because a donor donated $50 or more, and they checked a box saying, yes, I want to get a thank you letter. And so then you have your kids write a wonderful thank thank you letter, include a picture of the wonderful resource in color, have them color it in, and then you just call from a stack of 20 thank yous the best ones. You have to send a minimum of five or six in to Donors Choose. They give you a special little mailing label. You send it to them, and um, then you have um, finished the commitment. But mostly, I don't have to do that. So you run out of time. You, it's not hard. Just make sure you click the Contact Us button on, uh, when you're looking at your Donors Choose account. You click on Thank You Packages. You request more time. You get two more months. But don't be late, because then you lose points. So you want to start accruing points and points and points so you're never stopped in writing a project. Now I want to talk about our giving page, because it's a community of people that are teachers that love Donors Choose, and we share ideas about our projects, and we donate to each other's projects. And Laura Candler and I are the co-administrators of it. We have had 4,533 different people donate to projects through Caring Classrooms in the four years that we uh, have um, run it. We have raised over $353,000. We are so proud of this, that we have helped donate to projects and gotten people inspired to donate to projects. And I was just looking at Laura's comment, donations are tax deductible. So when you try to get donations, you tell people they're this is a tax deductible donation. Donors Choose provides a beautiful PDF anytime you want that shows your donations. So this is a great way to help people. So let me explain our Caring Classrooms giving page. It's two things. One is a giving page where you go and donate to projects. And two, it's a Facebook community. And if you've never done Facebook, just do it for your uh, teacher's account. 
And this every Sunday, teachers um, post their projects and share about them. And then I have the wonderful task of picking favorite projects to put on our page. And we guarantee that any project that's on our page will be fully funded. And it's also a place for me to tell you about new match offers. And I even tell you about ones that aren't published on the state list. So you want to just uh, join our Facebook community and um, you'll get to know people because you'll see their posts and you'll care about them. And you, it's really a wonderful place to have an online community of teacher friends that use Donors Choose. So uh, we, we welcome you to join us and um, we'd love you to join our community. The, um, we're, I'll hopefully see you next this Sunday, tomorrow. I want to mention some other grants. The Lily Sarah Grace Fund is fantastic. They like to donate to high poverty schools. Um, and um, they made a movie of me and my students because they like projects that integrate art with some academic subjects. So if you want to get some ideas, you can watch this film. Peggy put the link in. Uh, they will pay 100% towards your project if, if they uh, adopt it. So read the rubric, download it, and learn about how to you write a donor's choose proposal, but you also submit a, uh, a little note to literally Sarah Grace Fund so they know about your project. There's the target field grant. This is for anybody. You don't have to be a public school teacher. I noticed that I wasn't getting the grant, but once I switched to asking for a trip to learn about our Native American community, then I got the grant. And it's still open right now for um, submittal. In a, it, they open it between August and October every year. And they give you $700 for a field trip. Adopt a Classroom is another place where you can just, it doesn't take long, you just list what you want, and the, you'll get a certain amount of money from a donor, and you can go shopping. So those are some other grants that are available to you. If you want to reach me, I've got a blog called Francie's Focus. Feel free to contact me there. Feel free to write a comment tomorrow on our uh, Caring Classrooms Facebook page. And I am all ready to hand my uh, presentation over to Peggy. Wow, Francie, that was amazing. Um, I, I wondered if you wanted to say anything about the Google form for uh, people to fill in. Um, can you uh, do that for me? Because I'll, I'll pipe in, but my, my head's a blank right now. Oh, okay. Well, we have created a Google form for a, a special drawing. And this is something that you can complete after this webinar. And in particular, if you're going to participate in Welcome Week. And it's a really simple form to fill in. We're just asking you to give us your first and last name, your school name, and uh, your location, city and state, and just a certain about what your idea is. It doesn't even have to be what you end up doing, but an idea of what you think you might want to write a project for. Oh, and I remember, Peggy. This is so, you know why we want you to enter the Google Doc? This is because I have three more $25 gift yes! cards. Donors Choose gave me $100, so we already gave one away, and I have three more to give. So what we're asking you to do is put your name on there, and then submit your project on September 25th, and I will look for your project. And I, we will randomly select teachers that will get a donation to their project. I'll use that gift card money, and guess what? If you happen to have a project with a match, your my $25 donation to your project will be worth 50 So if that doesn't inspire you to get a match, I don't know what will. But yes, we're going to be giving away $75, which is 150 if you have a match, to three different teachers. Wow. And when are you doing that drawing? 
Well, I'm gonna, it's going to take a while for your yes. project to show up because a lot of teachers will be submitting on Welcome Week. So I'm going to do it towards the end of that week. Just like Donors Choose is going to wait to put their $50 in towards the end of the week, I'm also going to wait for that donation because, um, but, th so that's when I'll be doing it. So you tell your friends to watch the webinar, fill in the Google Doc. And yes. And then I will, um, the Google Doc, yes, this, uh, someone asked if it's for new teachers. You're, you, this is for welcome week teachers or never been funded teachers. So I am um, helping those teachers who uh, need a, a, an excellent way to get their project funded. That's great. Lori, are you going to be able to take the mic for Q&A? Sure. Awesome. Okay. Some of these questions have already been answered. Uh, one person asked, can we only have eight projects live at the same time? Yeah, it's not really eight live because, uh, for example, I have four projects that were funded, but I haven't yet received the resources or I mm -hmm. haven't uh, uploaded the photos. So it's eight projects in motion. But when you're a brand okay. new teacher, it's only three projects you're allowed. Uh, it's when you're a veteran and you've got some projects under your belt that have been funded that they move you up to eight. So yeah, you can only okay. have three when you're new. Three. For new for new people, mm -hmm. would it cover Mac software? Uh, can you ask for software? Yeah. Um, if I would say if it's listed as um, a, a resource at Quill or Staples or mm -hmm. Amazon, you could. There is something called a special request, and but that needs six points. So that's mm -hmm. when I was saying you could go to Home Depot and request wood. Um, mm -hmm. I do. I I get all my Lego supplies directly from Lego Education instead of Amazon mm -hmm. because I have a lot of points. So I write special requests. So mm -hmm. if it's not, but for a new teacher, I don't know. I'd only say you could do software if it's something that's sold on the uh, the vendor websites. Sure. How long does your wish list stay up on donors choose? Um, I believe the new limit is four months, but if you're going on a field trip, you have to let donors choose, have a whole month to get the check to the vendor. So uh, we'd like you to submit field trip projects up to eight months away. So um, don't, you don't say, oh, I want to go somewhere in October, it, your project won't post. It, donors choose request two months, so a month to have your project up and a month to send the money. If it's just resources, you'll have about four months and to um, have the project up before it, 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 it ends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't there a dollar limit for first time grant writers? You know, I don't know that, but I know for Welcome Week, the dollar limit wasn't at 500. Right, right, right. And I'm suggesting we don't go up that high. Sure. And somebody asked, should we wait until that se September 25th date to submit a project? Yes, you must. If you submit it now, you won't qualify for the fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. But I suggest you go through the process. You set up your account. You write your project. You just don't hit submit. No, so you're all ready, ready to go, go mm -hmm. on the 25th. Right. Is it okay not to update the photo each year? This person's photo is two years old. Yes. If you love your photo, I I used to keep my fifth grade photo up for five years. But now that I'm mm -hmm. a third grade teacher, <laughs> I have last year's photo. And I mm -hmm. might just keep that up for another six years. I love that photo. So yes. But we don't want you, if you have an old photo of your empty classroom, we don't want that. So right. please take it upon yourself to update your photos that way. OK. Can the field trip be for the whole grade level or just your own class? Yes, it can. It can. It's just, you know, it's going to be expensive. And so right. just be aware. And um, it, it's. It, it, 
it, you know, it's harder to get a match for that, but I have seen people use the tolerance match for mm -hmm. um, to go see the movie Wonder. So if you're mm -hmm. thinking of doing that, go ahead, write that, you know, get that done, because what a great a field trip that it would be for fifth grade and up. Okay. I think you already answered this, but it's worth repeating. Besides matches, Facebook and Twitter to get um, donors, how else could you get donors? Well, the Giving Page community is huge. There's many other uh, giving pages besides Caring Classrooms, and each of those giving pages has puts projects up and tries to get people to uh, enter a contest and win. And so you need to look up the word donors choose communities and see what's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of people on ours, so uh, we have uh, you know, a, a, a good chance of getting many projects. We usually add about six projects a week. So, and once a project's on our giving page, we guarantee funding. Other giving pages don't do that. But that's one way to get interest mm -hmm. in your project. And we sure. have found that many small donations to projects generates interest by donors and always, always donate to your own project so it doesn't just look like nobody wants it. So just right. throw in a couple of dollars to your own project just to get it started. Okay. Can you use district school buses for your field trip on Donors Choose? Absolutely. You just need to get either an email that says what the cost is for the bus, mm -hmm. or if you get it, have an a invoice, we call them price quotes. But you mm -hmm. have to have something other than you typing in Word, uh, a school bus costs, you know, 250 right. okay. We need something, and you just upload that. Okay. So do you know if you can apply for more than one grant through Target? Mm, I've never tried. I know our school applied for a grant, uh, so that I think it's a little different than the field mm -hmm. trip grant. But I, I think it'd be only one per teacher. So I would say no. I mean, a seven hundred dollar grant is pretty good. So I don't see why they would give it to two of two of you. It's pretty competitive, and you don't hear sure. till December, I think. It's, it's, if you get the grant. Okay. I think those were the questions that hadn't been answered before. Great. So I thank you so much for the presentation today and all the tips you gave us. Um, and Peggy typed, if, if anyone in the room has proposals that have been funded by Donors Choose that are willing to share, as an example, you can share the links in chat. Here's another question. What happens if, oh, I forgot to see, I didn't see that one in my, my list, Sharon, sorry. What happens if you are a donor and the project is not funded? OK, well, what happens is, is the money that you donated is returned to you in a donor choose mm -hmm. gift card. And so what I suggest okay. to teachers is, is Right, but if you know that donor, then make a new project and share your new project link with that donor and say, I know your donation was returned. Could you please take mm -hmm. that donation and put it on my new project that has a 50% match? So um, that usually is a good way to get the money if you know the donor. Sure. And if any of you want to see my projects, you just type in Francie Kugelman when you're on the DonorsChoose.org website, and you will see all my past projects. So feel free to take any of my ideas. But remember, the wording of them is such that I was going for a grant. So um, mm -hmm. I tailor what I write so I meet the grants and the 50% match criteria. So, you know, right. change it a little, just like we teach our kids about plagiarism, change it a little. And mm -hmm. feel free to use any of my project ideas. Terrific. Again, thanks so much, Francie. I think we'll go ahead and wrap up since we've gone over now. Um, I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. 
this is going to be real fast because I'm sorry we've gone over time, but we got a little bit of a late start. We have some fabulous shows coming up. Obviously, today was Donors Choose for Beginners, um, but it was really for advanced people, too. Next week, we have a great show on Adobe Spark with Suzanne Sally. September 30th, Patty Harju is going to come and teach us all about creating games for Breakout EDU. October 7th, two fantastic fifth grade teachers are coming to share their classroom experiences as our featured teachers. Michael Foster and Don Donahue are going to be talking about what they're doing with coding in their classrooms. October 14th, we're going to introduce Picture Book Month with co-founders Katie Davis and Tara Lazar. And this is going to be in honor of the founder Diane de las Casas, who did an incredible presentation for us just a couple of months ago, and who has tragically lost her life in a fire. So we want to do this in honor of Diane and get people all involved with Picture, picture Book Month. October 21st, Rustin Hurley the fabulous educator of nextgen.org, nextvista.org, is going to be sharing how to become a better teacher. Lots of great tips. Sarah Thomas is joining us to tell us all about EduMatch, October 28th. November 4th, we get to learn all about book snaps and gratitude snaps with Tara Martin, who created those ideas using Snapchat, believe it or not. And November 11th, Tiffany Whitehead, fabulous librarian, is going to be sharing some awesome tips and information about fake news and how you can teach your students about that. So we hope you'll come back every Saturday that you can and know that you'll find our recordings in the archives if you can't make it on a Saturday, but you really want to hear what the show is all about. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Harkett on latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a collaborate classroom. And as long as your session is uh, open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link or taking the link from the chat. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month as well. The video collections on iTunes U, and here's the link. You can also get to it from the Live Binder. As you exit the session, the survey link should open up. You can take the link from the chat box as well, or you can take the tab in the Live Binder. Once you complete the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. Please, please use a personal email address for these. Um, Schools tend to block these from getting to you, and it now prints out your name. And you get them thanks to Patty Ruffin. So thank you, Patty. Special thanks to our special guest, Francie Kubelman, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>